In our first kidney stone video, we discussed the general approach to diagnosis and management. In this video, we're heading downtown to explore the most common, or most commonly board tested, types of kidney stones. We'll cover the key features that distinguish each stone and touch on specific preventative measures to prevent recurrence. This ox with number one shaped horns will remind you that calcium oxalate is the most common type of kidney stone. Anything that increases the excretion of calcium or oxalate into the urine increases the risk. This includes hyperparathyroidism, represented as always by a nerdy PTHD. Elevated PTH drives calcium release from bone, leading to hypercalciuria. He's spilling his brown stew to remind you that GI malabsorption can also increase the risk by increasing oxalate in the urine. How? Well, normally, calcium in the gut binds oxalate and prevents it from being absorbed. But in diseases like IBD, malabsorbed fatty acids bind calcium instead, leaving oxalate free to be absorbed and end up in the urine. It's important to remember that most patients will have a normal serum calcium level. That's why our friend is selling normal vanilla ice cream. Of course, in the fairly rare instance that the level is high, assess for hyperparathyroidism. A 24-hour urine collection, however, will usually reveal hypercalciuria. To help you remember that, we elevated the urine luck sign above the ice cream stand and are keeping it open 24 hours a day. Since calcium oxalate stones are so common, let's talk about how to prevent them. In addition to increasing fluid intake and limiting dietary sodium, there are some additional tricks to specifically prevent calcium oxalate stones. Thiocyte diuretics, represented by this enthusiastic tourist's thighs, decrease urinary calcium content. In terms of dietary changes, a low-calcium diet is not recommended. Remember, we need calcium in the gut to bind oxalate and prevent its absorption. But high doses of vitamin C should be avoided, since oxalate is one of its metabolites. Decreasing animal protein intake may also help. 